1994, at the annual convention in Kansas City, I was given the task of being sure Norman Neblett made it to the bank, excuse me, to the banquet to receive the Golden Hammer Award. In those days, you didn't know in advance. I told him I would meet him in his room at 6.30 and we would go down together. My wife Cindy would save us a table. At 7.15, we were still in his room. Norman was sitting in a chair in his underwear, <laughs> being quiet and reflective. <laughs> After a lot of, well, I think we better get going, he finally got dressed. Just before we left, he slipped a piece of paper into his suit pocket. Later that night, as his name was called, I noticed that he pulled that piece of paper out of his pocket on his way to receive the award. I didn't remind him to wear socks. <laughs> he had the good sense to do that on his own. Good evening, everyone. My wife, Cindy, sends her greetings. Many of you know her, and she's sorry she couldn't be in attendance tonight. She's been a great blessing in my life and a tremendous support throughout my career. In 1981, while working on the material that would later become On Pitch, I was told by the Spirit that the material on which I was working was of great importance and that I would make a major contribution in this industry. That was a daunting revelation as I had only been out of school and in the industry less than a year. Since that time, however, I have never forgotten what I felt called to do, as where much is given, much is required. I recognize the eight Golden Hammer recipients that are here tonight and acknowledge this esteemed group. After being presented the award on Tuesday night, many speculated that I must be the youngest person ever to have received the Golden Hammer. Curious, I asked, Sandy to help me find the answer. We quickly determined that I was indeed younger than any of the recipients for the past decade. But looking back a ways, 27 years in fact, we came to Leroy Edwards. Based on the year that he was born, we determined that Leroy was only 59 when he received the Golden Hammer. Well, this really made me curious because I just celebrated my 59th birthday. I had to know what Leroy's birthday was. His birthday is May 20th. Mine is June 21st. So I am the youngest recipient by one month and one day. And I now forever have an excuse that if I do not live up to the standard and example that Leroy has set since he was awarded the Golden Hammer, that I was younger and less experienced. <laughs> I would like to acknowledge the influence that three Golden Hammer recipients have had on my career. The first is Jim Coleman, Sr who turned the key that unlocked the knowledge that became on pitch. The second is Albert Sanderson for his collaboration on the Baldison Sanderson temperament. By the way, it was called Baldison Sanderson and not vice versa because Al said whoever's name appeared first had to tune when we gave the class. <laughs> Finally, to Norman Neblett, who was my dear friend and mentor for 30 years and from whom I learned so much, including how to avoid some of the pitfalls of concert work. Looking back, there have been several pivotal events in my career. I was invited to attend a Baldwin training seminar in Aspen, Colorado, where I met Jack Crefting, who worked for Baldwin and was also the journal editor. I showed him my tuning handout and asked him if he thought it was worth publishing. He did, and this led to the On Pitch series, and my later becoming assistant editor and later tuning editor of the journal. 
I became the concert technician for the Utah Symphony, and this opened the door for training with Bill Garlick and Franz Moritz Steinway. It also opened the door to the Yamaha concert training program with Yoji Suzuki and Leroy Edwards. I helped place a Falcone piano on loan at the symphony, and this led to my meeting Lloyd Meyer. Through Lloyd Meyer, I had my introduction to Renner, Mason and Hamlin, opening a retail store, and teaching for Renner USA. The heads of Renner introduced me to Paolo Fazioli, which led to my carrying his piano and training with Heiner Sandwald at the Fazioli factory. This later led to my teaching for Fazioli worldwide and handling U.S. technical support. Most recently, my involvement with Renner has expanded to teaching worldwide, as well as giving presentations for the Orson Felt Company. Many of these connections were made possible by associations made through the Piano Technicians Guild. My association with PTG has given me the opportunity to become friends and teach alongside many of the great people in our industry. Beside Jim, Al, and Norm, who I mentioned earlier, they include Chris Robinson, Richard Davenport, Bill Spurlock, Michael Spreeman, and Nick Gravagna. I taught all day today with Carl Thiel, and tomorrow I am excited to teach for the first time with Jude Reveille. As rewarding as these collaborations have been, the friendships I have established have been even more meaningful. I remember with fondness having pizza with Jim Coleman in Provo, Utah, ice cream on the 4th of July in Carlisle, Massachusetts with Al and Mary Sanderson, fishing off the coast of Mexico with Norm Neblett, naming, cooking, and eating lobster with Wally and Vivian Brooks at their home in Connecticut, a week at Lake George with Chris and Karen Robinson, Robinson Dave Vanderlip, and Kathy Smith, interviewing Norm Neblett with Richard Davenport just prior to Norm's passing, then later planning and conducting Norm's memorial service with Richard, supported and being supported by Michael Springman during some of life's difficult moments, countless hours of preparing and planning with Carl Thiel, which had made me look much better than I really am, and 33 years of support and encouragement from my wife, Cindy, because of whom everything in my life has been so much better. The theme for this convention has been passing the torch. I was reminded earlier this week that metaphorically, when we pass the torch or knowledge, we increase the knowledge of others while retaining it ourselves. In my mind, I had another image. The Olympic torch is lit and then carried by one who then passes it on to another who, once it is received, carries it and then passes it on again. For each of us, there will be a time to receive the torch, carry it for a time, and then pass it on to another. During Norman's memorial service, I related the top 10 bits of wisdom that he imparted to me over the years. I would like to share them with you tonight. I call them Norman 1, 1 through 10. First one, do not make any major changes to the piano without the artist agreeing to check it before the concert. Verse 2, make friends with the stagehands and security personnel. Do not complain if they have to make a little noise doing their work. Number three, if an artist has a request, always do something, even if that something is nothing. <laughs> Being willing is often all that is required. Verse four, friends are more important than money. Verse five, Dogs make better friends than most people. <laughs> Verse 6, do not adjust the artist's bench unless you don't like him. In this case, run it all the way up and turn it around. <laughs> Verse 7, do not let the customer's problem become your problem. 
Verse 8, skillful plagiarism is far superior to inept creativity. <laughs> Verse 9, be sure the movers put the wire on correctly and that all the pedals work properly. And verse 10, don't believe your own, own BS. <laughs> Norm would say bullshit, but that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> Thank you for awarding me this great honor, and my thanks to Nate Rayburn for crafting this beautiful award, the Golden Hammer, <clears throat> the highest recognition bestowed by our organization, where much is given, much is required, so I pledge to continue to carry the torch with dignity and honor as long as I am able and thereby pass the torch to those yet to come as it was passed to me. <clears throat> Thank you for this honor.